The following is a special presentation by Ali RX. This is it folks, we're finally here, the fourth and final episode of Aki Pro Wrestling 64. Today's episode covers what many, including myself, consider to be one of the greatest wrestling games of all time, WWF No Mercy, named after the pay-per-view of the same name, particularly the 1999 one. Pardon me when I say this, but this game is just fucking awesome. I adore this game a lot. This game is probably the sole reason why I regret giving away my N64. Well, the other being Perfect Dark, but that's a whole nother game. Anyway, this is the second WWF game developed by Aki and the fourth WWF game published by THQ, as there were two more games in 2000 between this and WrestleMania. WWF Smackdown for the PlayStation, and WWF Royal Rumble for the Arcade and Sega Dreamcast. And around the same time No Mercy came out, Smackdown 2 Know Your Roll also came out for the PlayStation. All of these games were developed by Yukes, who were also developers of the Japanese Tokon Retiden series, as well as a familiar and popular wrestling game series you see today. Even though none of these three top WrestleMania No Mercy in my opinion, these games were still great. But obviously I'm not going to talk about that. Right now, it's time to review Aki's magnum opus, WWF No Mercy. So we begin the game with a build up to an epic intro. And with the appropriate music they chose, it's like the intro is saying, It's coming. It's coming. And then the WWF logo pops up, and then the sirens show up, and then no mercy, and then this. Now we begin the badass intro. And then we got The Rock and Triple H looking at each other like they're fucking Terminator robots or something. Hasta la vista, Rocky. And of course we got everybody kicking each other's ass. Now one thing you'll notice is that the graphics have greatly improved so much that this is as realistic as an N64 game could get. Granted, this was late in the N64's life cycle, but it's still very impressive. Now here's a little interesting story. When this game was first launched in November of 2000, the early copies they released had a defective memory chip which would cause game data to erase very spontaneously no matter what you did or how far you got. However, after THQ received numerous complaints, this problem was eventually fixed with later copies of the game. Sadly, I was one of those unfortunate people who got the game early. I got it on Christmas Eve of that year, which was roughly a month after the game's launch. And this intro ends with one of the greatest catchphrases of all time. WWF No Mercy. Once again, Aki follows the principle of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The gameplay controls are, of course, the same as their last five games, but this time there were some major updates done to finally perfect the engine. For one thing, it feels a lot smoother than all the previous games. Don't get me wrong, the other games played great as well, but this one feels natural so to speak. It's a little faster pace, the animation look more more realistic for the most part. Maybe it's just me, but that's how I see it. Also, pressing L to switch to a back grapple now has the ability to switch back to a front grapple by pressing L again. This is good because if you press L by accident, you won't have to worry about screwing up a front grapple. Plus if your opponent is a super heavyweight like Mark Henry or Viscera, you don't pick him up like a feather anymore. 
just like in real life, your character is going to have a hard time picking his opponent up unless he's a super heavyweight as well. And honestly, I have mixed opinions on that. Sure, it makes the game more realistic and provides some challenge, but if you're lucky to pick him up, you'll notice that how their attitude meter gets depleted very quickly while mine goes way up. This is good if you're below super heavyweight, but if you are one and they get lucky, that might not be a good sign. And another thing they added was the ability to drop your weapon and reuse that very same weapon. In the previous games, when you drop your weapon, it somehow magically fell through the ground. I don't know why. I thought this had to do with Carter's limitations, but it seems they found a way around it. You can even throw weapons at your opponent as well, even from far away. Not only that, you can slam your opponent through tables, especially the announcer's table. But sometimes you gotta be careful because you might end up with this. This is also the first Aki game to use ground finishers. All you have to do is get your special, like you usually do, and just press A when your opponent is on the ground. But the biggest change of them all is the ability to fight backstage. All you gotta do is Irish whip your opponent to the ramp, then Irish whip him again, and you're finally backstage. You have five places to fight in. The hallway, the locker room, the boiler room, the bar, and the parking lot. And there's a whole lot of weapons to use and tables to slam your opponent on. Oh, and they also fix the interference in matches. In Revenge of WrestleMania, every time somebody would interfere in a match, the person who was interfering would get a close-up on his face and gameplay would come to a temporary halt. This time, you could keep playing even when somebody interferes. All the exhibition matches and multiplayer matches from WrestleMania are here, but this is the first Aki game to have a ladder match where you win by getting a briefcase or a title belt hanging above, and an Iron Man match where you win by with the most pins or submissions. This is also the first and only Aki game to have guest referee matches. You can either call it down the middle, or you can screw people over like the Montreal Screwjob. Oh, shut up! My only problem with this feature is that you can't let the computer be the guest referee. It's either you or another player. And returning from WCW vs NWO World Tour and Virtual Pro Wrestling 64 is handicap matches. And if you win a match, your character does a special victory pose or dance. The best one is definitely the too cool one. However, due to Carter's limitations, there were some things that needed to be sacrificed in order for these additions to be included. For one thing, the entrances are trimmed down. You only see the wrestler come down the ramp and that's it. No more full entrances. Also, you know how in WrestleMania some tag teams come out together if they have the same theme in Titantron? This time, no tag teams whatsoever come out together regardless of what theme you put on. Again, these things happen because of Karcher's limitations. The entrances are still cool though. You got some new things like the Y2J countdown and viewing the pyro on the entrances from a high angle before the Titantron starts to play. Now let's take a look at the roster. Once again, you've got a big roster of WWF stars. A lot of these wrestlers are carried over from WrestleMania 2000 like Rock, Austin, Triple H, Kane, Undertaker, Mankind, The Harleys, Edge and Christian, Chris Jericho, Hardcore Holly, Al Snow, Steve Blackman, and Eves like China, Deborah, Terry, and Ivory, and many more. However, because this game is based on the late 1999 and mid-2000, we get new guys like Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn, British Bulldog, Crash Holly, the Dudley Boys, the Right to Censor, Taka Michinoku, and new divas like Lita and Trish Stratus. Basically all your favorite stars of the Attitude Era are here. And then some. There's also some unlockable wrestlers in the game. You have Shawn Michaels, Ken Shamrock, Cactus Jack, Mick Foley, The McMahons, Mae Young, all the WWF announcers, The Godfather's Ho, and Andre the Giant. You can unlock these guys in three different ways. 
Championship, Survival, and the SmackDown Mall. I'll get to those things in a moment. Not only that, you can also find hidden characters if you select an existing character and press C left or C right, much like in WCW vs NWO World Tour and Virtual Pro Wrestling 64. For example, if I pick Takamichi Noku and press C right, I get to pick Funaki. If I pick the Godfather, I also get to play as the Good Father, which was his right to censor gimmick. If I pick Terry, I also get to play as Deborah. If I pick Ivory, I also get to play as Jacqueline. There's plenty more where that came from. The arenas also have updated. Raw's War and the Big Fight pay-per-views from WrestleMania are here, but they've changed to, to go with the 1999-2000 timeline, which means now you have the real WrestleMania 2000. However, we also get four new arenas, No Mercy, obviously, SmackDown, Armageddon, and Backlash. The latter two are unlockable via the SmackDown Mall. Anyway, here we have two single player modes, Championship and Survival. Survival is basically a gigantic Royal Rumble where you fight and eliminate over 80 superstars, although a lot of them are duplicates. And sometimes hidden characters will appear. If you, and only you, eliminate them, you unlock them. And depending on how many superstars you eliminate, you earn a certain amount of cash to use at the SmackDown Mall. And if you followed the games from the beginning, Championship might give you the impression that it's the same as the one in WCW NWO Revenge, but no. There is a HUGE difference. This is the first Aki game to have storylines in the season mode, and the second wrestling game ever made with storylines, the first being WWF SmackDown for the PlayStation. Unlike Road to WrestleMania where you progress throughout the game regardless of winning or losing, depending on the storyline you play, you either play a match where you can progress regardless of winning or losing, or you compete in a match where you have to win in order to progress. And in some cases, you have to win a match and complete a specific objection. For example, you have matches where you have to hit your opponent with a weapon multiple times, make your opponent bleed, pin a specific guy, and so on. But even though there are some matches where you can progress by either winning or losing, the storyline is subject to change. So this is a very unique mode for a wrestling game at the time, especially when comparing it to the previous hockey games. What's also cool about Championship is that the storylines are based on actual storylines that happen in the WWF between 1999 and 2000. Like they would have storylines based on the McMahon Helmsley era and they would use the exact same quotes word for word. But I find it odd that Stevie Richards is in the Big Show's place. I understand the reasons why he was not included, but they could have had a better replacement. Like Kane, for example. You have six belts to choose from. WWF title, tag team, intercontinental, European, hardcore, and a women's title. After you clear each stage, you earn money for buying stuff at the SmackDown Mall. After you win the title and championship, you can now put it on the line in exhibition matches and pay-per-view. Once you win all the titles and championship, you'll be able to defend or fight for them all. And you might catch an easter egg depending on who has the WWF title. And if you noticed already, yes, Creator Belt is gone in favor of this. Since I've mentioned the SmackDown Mall a lot before, let's take a look at it. First off, Creative Superstar is back from WrestleMania 2000, and it's essentially the same but with a lot of improvements. The first major improvement is the ability to create completely new female wrestlers. In WrestleMania 2000, you can only clone an existing diva, and the attires were extremely limited. This time, however, you can give them their own hair, face, clothes, weapons, etc. Other changes they did were giving the attires names and adding the, their own avatar for your created wrestler. And this game has tons of extra icons, including generic icons and icons of other WWF stars not added to the roster like Gangrel, Midian, The Headbangers, and The Mean Street Posse. Not only that, their attires are here as well. My guess is that they were going to be included in the roster, but were taken out because they were either A, released from the WWF, B, not appearing that much, or C, Carger's limitations, again. And if you've noticed from the icons, yes, 
Aki Man from WCW NWO Revenge is back as a creative wrestler and as a replacement for the Crash Test Dummy for previewing signature moves. He also brought his soulmate Aki Woman. THQ Man, on the other hand, died a horrible, horrible death. <laughs> Or maybe not, I'm just guessing. Boy, this is getting really stupid. <laughs> we also get more original music for creative wrestlers instead of just two like the last one. Most of it is generic crap, and the only one I like is the one that sounds like The Undertaker's theme, which I use for The Undertaker since he had the Raw theme and not Kid Rock because of copyright reasons. And of course we get a ton of new moves, attires, faces, and weapons thanks to the updated roster. And you can also get even more in the shop area in the Smackdown Mall, which is this. This marks the first Aki wrestling game to have a store to buy unlockable stuff after earning money from a single player season mode. Here you can buy attire and moves for your creative wrestlers, weapons to use in a match for when picking up from a crowd, and hidden characters in arenas. My problem is, whose bright idea was it to make the Godfather's Hulk cost $500,000? I could understand if it's somebody like Shawn Michaels or Andre the Giant, but a hoe? A prostitute? Who doesn't have that good of a move set? Really? Are you insane? So yeah, this is a breathtaking wrestling game. It was brilliant back then, and it's still brilliant to this day. This game is so great, it has countless mods. The other games had mods too, but this one is very popular among the modding community. And as you've seen, most of my complaints in this game are extremely minor. I've also mentioned the big one in the beginning, which was the save glitch, but I've also said that it was fixed later on. This game may not be perfect, but it comes very, very close. Of the four Aki games in the US, I highly recommend this one the most. Great gameplay, great roster, nice graphics for N64, up to four players, a lot of extras, a deep create mode, has everything you want from a wrestling game, and I mean everything. All in all, WWF No Mercy is one of the greatest wrestling games of all time. I give this game a platinum. <laughs> No Mercy also had a planned Game Boy Color counterpart, much like WrestleMania 2000. However, this game was going to be developed by Aki instead of Natsume. Not only that, it was going to be have Game Boy and N64 connectivity like the Pokemon games. But due to development hell, THQ went back to Natsume to develop the game, only for it to get cancelled later on. It's a shame though because I would love to see Aki Corporation's take on 2D wrestling games since they did so well on the 3D ones. Not only that, there was supposed to be a sequel to No Mercy called WWF Backlash and it was supposed to be released in 2001, but it was cancelled due to the N64 being discontinued by that time in favor of the GameCube. Though they could have easily moved development to that system, but what can you do? Sadly, this would be the last WWF game developed by Aki Corporation, as THQ parted ways with them as well as Asmic Ace. After that, all the future THQ, WWF, and WWE games went in favor of Ukes, except for the WWE games on the original Xbox, which are all crap. They did this because apparently SmackDown 1 and 2 sold a lot more than WrestleMania 2000 and No Mercy. And like most companies, THQ thinks the one with the most sales is considered the better series. So anyway, after No Mercy, THQ would continue mainly with Ukes to develop the rest of the SmackDown series as well as all the GameCube WWE games. Come next gen, SmackDown would become SmackDown vs Raw, THQ and Ukes make the series multi-platform, and they have stuck with the series ever since. And sadly, I lost interest in that series around that time as well. But what happened to Aki Corporation? Well, despite all this, they continue to make wrestling games. Sort of. After WCW parted ways with THQ in 98, EA would acquire the rights and would develop and publish two games before WCW's demise. Mayhem in 1999, which was an okay game, 
and Backstage Assault in 2000, one of the worst wrestling games ever made. After those two disappointments, a direct sequel to WCW Mayhem was plan planned to be released in 2001 for the PlayStation 2. This time, however, it would be developed by the Aki Corporation. But, as you know, WCW was bought by the WWF that very same year, so it was cancelled. Later on, EA would acquire the rights to the Def Jam Records license, and they would rehire Aki to recycle the WCW Mayhem 2 engine, and thus, Def Jam Vendetta was released for the PS2 and GameCube. It was a wrestling game with rappers and hip-hop stars, which is a very unusual but still a fun game. A sequel of this was released called Def Jam Fight for New York, which was also developed by Aki Corporation and published by EA. Around the same time Def Jam Vendetta and Fight for New York were released, Bandai also had Aki develop four games based on the anime Kinikuman Nisei, which was dubbed in America as Ultimate Muscle. Only two of them were released in America. We had Kinikuman Nisei for the GameCube, released as Ultimate Muscle Legend vs. New Generation, and Kinikuman Generation, which was released here as Galactic Wrestling. And only Japan has the two Kinikuman Muscle Grand Prix games. Maybe I'll review these games someday, if I ever get my hands on all of them, including the Japanese ones. So this was Aki Pro Wrestling 64, a special review dedicated to six great wrestling games that stood the test of time, beginning with a tight grappling system and adding a lot of extras to make the game more enjoyable. What's also great about this series is that they were released around the same time the Monday Night Wars rolled in, which was the most competitive time period between the WCW and the WWF, the two biggest promotions of the late 90s and early 2000s. And the way the games were released really reflected how the wars turned out. The first two games, three if you count their early one on the PlayStation, were in WCW's favor while the last two were in the WWF's favor. This was because WCW was winning the wars in 97 while WWF would retaliate in 98 and would continue to win until 2001 when the war was over. Now I want your opinion on these games. You can vote for which of the six Aki wrestling games do you think is the best. You have two ways. By going to this link right here, or if you happen to have Facebook, you can like my page and vote on the wall as well. So I want to thank Aki Corporation, aka Sin Sophia, for making such wonderful wrestling games. And I want to thank you guys, the fans of subscribers, for watching and enjoying this special review. So stay tuned for more of my reviews in the future and possibly another special review because, hey, you never know, this thing might get a sequel. See ya. Thank you very much.